This is a Sockness Science video podcast, exploring the lives and research of Sockness scientists. I'm Cassandra Brooks. Sometimes the best way to solve our most pressing problems is to bridge two seemingly different disciplines. Marielle Vasquez, an assistant professor in the math department at San Francisco State University, does just that. She's a mathematical biologist. Through applying theories of math, she helps solve biological problems, like uncovering how viruses invade their host and developing drugs and treatments to cure some of the world's most deadly diseases. So there are some people who give service. So they work in a biology lab or very closely with the biology lab, and the biology lab says, I need this data analysis. And then the mathematicians or statisticians provide the service. There's other people who take the excuse of biology to do beautiful mathematics, but at the end of the project, they're not so interested of the applicability. So they, they get the inspiration from biology, and then they take off in a pure mathematical endeavor. Marielle says that she's somewhere in between these two. She develops mathematics in collaboration with biologists, with the hope of making models that are applicable to real-world problems. So most of my research is in an area called DNA topology. DNA topology. DNA topology. So I am one of the few people who apply pure mathematics to biology. So and by pure mathematics? By pure mathematics, uh, I, in my case I apply a topology, but you could think of topology, algebra, combinatorics, number theory, um, things that have historically been assigned a tag of pure mathematics, whereas applied mathematics oh, would I be see. more the numerical analysis, uh, differential equations. More sort of statistical. Uh, also statistical analysis. Et and topology, what does that refer so, to? So topology studies shapes of things in space, so it's very related to geometry, but it's more relaxed than geometry. We can study Board. strings, we can study uh -huh. surfaces, we can study volumes, but they're made out of Play-Doh. According to Marielle, in geometry you study a rigid shape, observing its fixed properties. Whereas in topology, a shape might wobble or move around. A surface might be folded. If it's a string, it might have a knot in it or close into a circle. And uh, my PhD advisor used to say that, in his talks very often, he says that topology is geometry done in California. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very relaxed. Excellent. And so you use that to better understand uh, DNA molecules? and Yes, exactly. So okay. we use topological models to understand mm -hmm. how DNA sits inside the cellular nucleus or how DNA sits inside the virus and what shape the DNA adopts inside these very confined environments or we use topology to understand the action of enzymes on DNA. Enzymes are big proteins that bind and break DNA. In doing so, they change the topology, often tying knots where they broke the DNA. Marielle says these knots act as spies in the cell and tell her what the enzymes were up to. So we know what we started with, we know what we end with, and we ask the question, what did the enzyme do? And these knots tell us a story, and, but we need to piece it together. So it's a, it's a very nice puzzle. Incredible. <laughs> so, and how does that apply to, say, you and me, or, or does it, it, are there biomedical implications? So when you're trying to develop drugs for other type of viruses, you, usually drugs target some, some stage in the development of this virus. So you could potentially think they could target the, the packing of the DNA. So that, that could be one, one thought. But that, that's far removed from what, what I do. But for example, for one, one real world application um, that has health implications is uh, cholera. Cholera is a bacterium and it makes you very sick, and it kills a lot of people in the developing world. But the, these bacteria, they're not, they're not infective in general. They need to be infected themselves first by a bacteriophage. So there's a tiny virus that infects bacteria that injects their DNA inside these cells, and then they change something in the DNA of the bacterium, and when that changes, then the bacterium can infect you and make you sick. Before that, the bacterium will not make you sick. So understanding the mm -hmm. understanding those bacteriophages will become crucial to understanding or finding a cure for, for cholera, for example. So, 
And it sounds yes. like it's a really exciting time to be doing the sort of math you're doing. Like, it's there'd be a exciting. lot of room for students to come in and do new work because it's, yeah. you know, if you're tackling some of these major diseases. It is an exciting time and, and the funding agencies are very interested because of all the health implications. With the Sockness Science Video Podcast, I'm Cassandra Brooks. 